All right, welcome everyone. A uh, bit of a different video here today. Uh, I haven't been able to get out for a dig, so I thought I'd show you a little bit of um, what I do on the side. I actually, um, I work a job. I have a job. Um, keeps me busy. But I, um, I like to get out to op shops and markets and things like that and then, you know, search some second-hand stuff to, to resell for a bit of pocket money. So um, I do quite, quite a ride out of it. A um, bit of spending money, so anyway, I thought I'd run you through a bit of what I do, um, what I look for um, to resell, um, you know, how I, I sell it all on eBay, um, my setup, it's all pretty basic stuff, and this isn't meant to be an instructional guide or anything like that, it's just what I do. So, um, yeah, I'll just run you through my, my little setup here. So, basically I have this this table here with a white cloth over it and then I have I'll see if I can do this one handed but I've got a blind here now this blinds just um, what it cost me $15 I think at uh, Bunnings so it's just all this my white backdrop to take photos so I'll just roll it down there like that over here, excuse the mess, I have a light stand the nicely framed dog water over there but anyway, um, yeah I have a light stand there that I actually got lucky with I bought that on clearance at Bunnings for $26 down from 60 odd so good score there yep, alrighty so I'll turn the camera off actually I won't, I'll just run you through a, through a few things I'm going to list today so I can take photos of and everything so I'll just I'll show you what sort of things I get so as you can see that was five bucks at the Salvation Army um, it's a guitar um, tuner not worth a lot of money um, they sell for a brand, brand new about 20 bucks on eBay so I'll ask 15 for it it'll cost me uh, 7.55 to, uh, to ship it and you take in eBay fees and you know there's there's a five dollar note to be made out of that. Um, moving right along, t-shirts, these shirts here, all these ones bar the bottom one which we'll get to in a moment were two dollars each so that's Live the Legend with a Harley Davidson on it. It's not actually Harley branded so I can't sell it as Harley but it'll still sell. I'll still get 20 bucks for that because it's just a a cool design and, and sought after. Alright, I'll put that down there for the moment. The next one, I would normally have not picked this up, um, only it was two dollars. I've never sold these before, but as you can see there, I hope you can see it's um, a Greg Norman um, branded shirt and it's play dry material, which I believe is made by Nike. And apart from it looks like someone's hit the tag with an iron. The shirt is absolutely flawless, there's no holes, no pulls, no tears, no nothing like that, no stains. And that's all the stuff you've got to look for, guys. If you get it stained, um, or it's got pulls in it or anything like that, you'll never move it. Nobody wants it. So, key number one. And armpit stains. Look for armpit stains. You won't sell it with armpit stains. Alrighty. Next one. That's a nice little score for, um, for two bucks. It's Callaway Golf branded which is any golfers out there know it's a good brand a little bit of pilling inside there which I'll get rid of that won't be a problem the beauty of it is it's size 3XL and for two bucks again it's pretty good nick there's um, nothing major with that just a little little light wear um, yeah anyway so that's cool two bucks I that one I should get close to 30 bucks for the Greg Norman one I'm not sure I'll probably look for mid 20s including postage and see if I can get that all right next one I wouldn't have bought if I'd noticed it's a 2008 um, season membership shirt I found experience wise anything that's got that sort of stuff it dates it and unless it's a collectible really hard to sell so I actually paid as you can see there I paid seven bucks for that so um, yeah, had I've noticed that, I was too busy checking out for stains and everything else, and I didn't even notice the date. So, 
um, had I noticed that, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, or certainly not for that. You know, it's a $2 shirt because I'm only going to get 20 at the max for it. Right, next. Ever see these guys? Deal or no deal interactive um, DVD game? Grab it. Especially at a couple of bucks. That is $25 used every day of the week. I've sold these before. Had a brand new one that went for, I think it was 40 bucks. And it sold almost instantly. And this will sell almost instantly for 25 without a doubt. Um, this was a good score. As you can see there, it comes with the box. I paid eight bucks for it. Perfect working condition. There's no marks on it. There's not even light scratches on the screen. I mean, it's my fingerprints all over it. But it's pretty trick. It's got GPS in it. It's also got a 3D mode for filming, which is interesting. Um, stereo microphone inputs, it's, yeah. Um, what was that one? I think it was 12 megapixel, that one. It'd be on the box, 14.1 megapixel. So that's a sweet score. I'll turn that into 100 bucks. Easy, I'll ask 120 and take 100 bucks. Um, best offer. Um, next fellow here. I've got no idea really. He's a little bobblehead, he's ceramic, he's heavy. He's got a busted finger. But I just thought he was cool for three bucks. Somebody's got to want him. Sid Swanee Skilton. Never heard of him. I don't follow AFL, so I don't know anything about that. These things here, apart from a little bit of um, cracking on them, you can see the soles. They're like they've never ever been worn. So I'll get that back in camera. So. I don't know what's happened to make them crack like that, but these shoes, uh, actually the lady, the lady had a bit of a gasp when she saw them, when I took them to the counter at the shop, she said, what? Um, she said, do you know what they're worth? I said, no, I'm going to guess they're pretty expensive because that's what Columbia are. She said, yeah, they're $150 shoes, and I looked them up, and yeah, brand new, they're 150 bucks those. But with the cracking and everything, I'm probably only going to get 50 to 60 for them. But, with that and the camera, sweet little scores. Alrighty, I'll turn the camera off for a second and get set up to um, how I photograph. Alright, as you can see guys, there's the shirt, and he's on the mannequin. This, this little mannequin is just a blow-up one, cost you about 10 bucks, no, probably 15 actually, delivered to your door from China. So, cheap Chinese rubbish, but it does the trick. Alright, so I've got my shirt positioned there, and I've got my beautiful little Oppo phone there. I'm going to have to put the camera down because my hand's too shaky. So can you see that? Oh yeah, there we go. So I'll just do this with a demo, but I um, normally take a, a series of photos and I will. Oh, glare on the screen. Oh, I'll try and hold it the best I can. So then I just um, go into my photos, find that photo which is there. And I go into, I hope you can see this guys, edit mode. I just do a simple edit where I crop him down. I normally try and crop the top of the um, mannequin off there like that. Done. There's my photo. Ready to upload to eBay. Um, I probably should mention that, yeah, I do this exclusively on eBay. I don't sell anywhere else. Um, we don't have all, all the options like the US does either, but um, and eBay is expensive, but look it works and you just got to budget everything in. As long as you budget and your fees and your postage and everything into your listings, you've got no worries. Cover yourself. Uh, delete that fella out because we don't need him anymore. Alright, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so the next thing I do is I have this little whiteboard here and um, I've just got a crude t-shirt drawing that I use 
for everything and ever remove that and then all I do is I white out up the top you know wipe out what the previous one was and write you know this is the Bronco shirt so I write Broncos size 3XL then I grab the old tape measure do the cross measurements I normally measure armpit to armpit and then from about here to the base so I'll go ahead and do that Alrighty, so there's the measurements 64 pit to pit and 80 length and then I go and take my phone oh, shaky hands today and I've got some glare too which is not happy alright so I've taken that and I'll see if I can get into it without a glare on it head out of there head back into the photos grab that photo which is there and then hit my edit button crop it down and with this one because it doesn't matter about the glare in the background I normally just I think it's that one there and I hit the bright button just to brighten the whole thing up done I should mention too that as you can probably see I've taken all the photos for this shirt and then I edit them later so that's the one I've edited so far I normally take a photo of any logos take a photo of the back of the shirt and a photo of the tag and then the measurements one and they're all the photos I upload unless there's some other interesting things in there obviously but um yeah that's essentially that and then I just take all the photos now and then I upload them all like I edit them all later and then add them to the listings when I get around to doing that um, I don't do my listings on the phone, I only do the photos and editing on the phone, I'm old school I do that on my computer, I do the, um, the uploading and the you know, creating the listing and so forth so yeah, cool, there you go, I'll be back alright, and the final step in that process is I use these cellophane bags um, these I buy off eBay, everything I buy off eBay to be honest um, packaging wise, it's just so cheap these here, I think about 10 bucks for 100, and these ones they're um, the poly mailers, so they're the same thing as Australia Post use in their prepaid bags. Um, they're about 11 dollars something for 100 of them delivered. This is all delivered, um, both from Australian companies, so you'll get them in you know a week type thing. Um, so, with these, you purchase your eBay or your postage on eBay when you sell, and you pay seven dollars 55 and if you do it through um, Australia Post, if you buy their prepaid satchels, you're looking at $8.55 or if you use one of these and get Australia Post to put the postage on there, you're looking at $8.30 plus this, which is about 11 cents a bag. So, save you that little bit. So, by doing your postage yourself, you're paying yeah, your $7.55 plus 11 cents. Um, yeah, and that's how I ship them out. I just put the label straight on there print the label out, stick it on there and that'll fold up in the less than 500 grams and it's on its way. And these are a handy tool to have too. And just kitchen scales, again just cheapies, turn them on, I've got mine in grams, this one goes up to 10 kilo, so, so you can just look at your ship, shipping, there you go, 276 grams, so it'll go as a um, 500 gram shipping rate, so nice and easy. Alrighty, another little thing to point out I guess is um, it's pretty important this because I guarantee you if you don't put that in they're going to ask you the sizes, okay? It's just experience. You put 3XL and you know there's so many different sizes you can, you know by buying closure cells what it's like. So um, yeah, always put the measurements, they're always going to ask if you don't or they're not going to sell because people want those measurements. Um, what else should I mention? A couple of brands to be on the lookout for that are... Oh, I used to buy a lot of Under Armour gear. Um, it does still sell. It doesn't sell for the prices I was getting for it. Like a basic Under Armour shirt you, you get 30 40 bucks for, but now you're scratching $20. Um, but Foot Joy is the big one. It's a golf brand. I don't play golf myself. I'm not too busy at digging holes. But... Um, Foot Joy, 
it doesn't matter if it's got some obscure brand on it or you know like a um some obscure golf tournament or whatever it doesn't matter it sells it's i've had stuff from you know um back at burke country clubs in the u.s and i'm selling them in in australia and i'm getting 30 40 bucks a shirt plus shipping on top so um foot joy is one to keep an eye out for obviously all your premium brands things like cameras like cameras you can pick up at flea markets and garage sales and and stuff like that um you, i got lucky with that at the thrift store i must admit that's extremely lucky to get that um but you know you might pay 20 25 bucks at a flea market or garage sale but they sell hey they sell really good on ebay i've um i've had a panasonic lumix um like a slr style but with a fixed lens so it's got a, a high zoom and stuff like that and it was old too it was i think it was eight megapixel from memory um but just you know lumix panasonic lumix it's a good brand i got 150 bucks for that camera and i paid 30 for it but i knew that i was going to flip it for good money um just a few other things yeah like sometimes when you're in thrift shops you get the opportunity to look things up other times i get a bit embarrassed because you get someone looking over your shoulder or whatever and if i'd known what that was worth i wouldn't have bought it um i've also had some I've found really difficult to find like English Premier League football clubs like Manchester United and stuff like that. Their stuff, this doesn't sell. I don't know why. I just can't get it rid of it. Um, yeah, yeah, troll through. There's not many DVDs that are worth anything, but um, anything new and sealed, have a look, see what it's worth. Um, just trying to think something offhand. Um, you know, learn to dance or anything about. Um, mother and baby you know like um, documentary style things um they sell just a general you know, general movies and stuff like that I, I just avoid them they're not worth anything and video games are pretty much the same unless you find something like that and i've also found like um especially at op shops you, you'll get um like old um clip art things like that dvd um, cd rom clip art things like that that are you know 2000 to 2005 and they sell them for a you know, dollar at the thrift shop and you can flip them for 10 or 15 bucks easy people people are after that sort of stuff so yeah um and it's not a big outlay too you know i haven't lost yet but it's not a big outlay if you if you um you do lose you know you throw your dollar away but that the australian version with andrew o'keefe beautiful flip that one i was stoked to find another one of those i'm always keeping my eye out for them all right, so a lot of times when you buy stuff at the op shop, they're lovely and they go and put price tags on uh, in marker, like they write the price in marker. I paid seven bucks, so that's Columbia, so I didn't say that. But I think I did actually. But anyway, um, a good way to remove that is just uh, regular isopropyl rubbing alcohol, just a bit on a tissue. Oh, a bit more, actually. And that'll just wipe off. That was good of this mob to put it on the, the black part of the shoe. Oh, yeah, most of them don't, they're not that considerate. As you can see, that just wiped off the tissue mark down there, but anyway. So, no one would ever know you paid seven bucks for those. There's plenty of goodies out there for everyone, and uh, yeah, the more the merrier, eh? If you want to make a few bucks, like I said, you know, like just here, I'm going to make that. After fees and everything, I will. You know, it could be $20 profit there. These fella here, after fees and everything, there's going to be, I reckon, 50 buck profit. The camera, after fees and everything, I reckon there's a $100 bill there. Um, yeah, so what do we got? 150, 170 bucks for, you know, um, what a, oh, went to three thrift shops, I think. So. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad at all. I've also I've scored some some sweet stuff if you if you're out there looking for it. Like um, what have I sold recently? I, I had a I bought a mobile phone, an Oppo mobile phone. It'd been dropped, cracked screen. Um, Oppo F1F, and it sold at auction. I put it in an auction. I normally don't do auction, but I, because I thought you know 
I'll list it for my five bucks back and see how I go. Um, just really didn't know what it was worth, but it sold for thirty-seven dollars plus postage. So you know, five bucks into thirty-seven, it was somebody's throwaway. And then you know, like other things like this, this guy here, the Sydney Swans thing. I've got no idea of the value on that. Might be worth nothing, but you know, you throw it out there. There's no others on eBay, so you know, who knows? Maybe some Super Sydney Swans fan needs it. And um, yeah, I'll put 20 bucks on it plus postage, and if it sits there for 12 months, it's no skin off my nose. Um, storage, yeah. Sorry, so um, for small items and discs and things like that, I have a set of drawers, and I, um, you know, like plastic tub drawers. I store them all in that, and um, the shirts and stuff, they lay flat in that cello, you know, whatever you call it, yeah, cellophane plastic wrap stuff, and um, they sit in plastic tubs. I've just got, I think I've got four going at the moment, um, just, you know, the cheap shop plastic tubs. With the way eBay is and their selling rules and stuff, that if you sell something, you don't have tracking on it, then you've got no cover. Um, so always use tracking unless you're prepared to, you know, lose that item because there's scammers out there. Eh? There's, there's people that do this all the time and just out there to rip you off. Something like that at two bucks, I would take the risk of sending that as a large letter, which would cost two dollars and have no tracking. If it went sort of 30 to 40 bucks, then I'd probably throw a signature on delivery on there, a registered post label, and cost an extra 420, I think, so 620 to post that with tracking. Um, these things here, they're all gonna be um, under the 500 gram mark, so you're looking at that 755. That one, if it goes over 100, anything over 100, I'll always put a signature on delivery on. Otherwise, um, you know, just if they go for 50, it'll be just um, tracked. All right, another thing worth mentioning is there's that $2 sticker I just took off there. That isopropyl alcohol is also really good for removing the glue residue. Right, hang on. Hang on. Before it makes a liar of me, I'll put a bit of fresh juice on there. There we go. There we go. Residue's gone. I hope you can see that. That's clear, you can see there. But trust me, it's gone. Alright, another thing with your eBay listings is keywords. Make sure you, you use them and make sure you use them right. Um, the reason I say that is because that shirt, the Harley Davidson one, is not Harley Davidson merchandise, so you can't sell it as Harley Davidson. eBay will pick up on it, or you know Harley Davidson, the people who sell their gear, will pick up on it. They'll get your um, listing removed, and you know it just. Um, I don't know what they do with their. Um, yeah, whatever they call it with eBay, but it hurts you. It hurts you. I've done it before. I had some um, Holden tire caps, they were chrome Holden tire caps, but they weren't made by Holden. And um, <clears throat> my listing got removed, and um, I got some sort of copyright infringement strike or some rubbish like that. But and it hurts your listings. You do notice you don't, you know, you go without selling stuff for a while, it does seem to hurt. So back to. Um, keywords that Harley shirt I would not use Harley in it I would use um, you know the lived um, what did it say lived the dream or whatever whatever the word was the word the writing was on the shirt I would also um, because it was a double-sided print I would say double-sided print I would um, yeah just mention the, um, the the quality of the shirt and you know any faults or anything like that obviously in your description but in the in the title just keep it to keywords keep it to the good stuff if you can find it like I'll with this one here um, because it's Greg Norman there's a there's a good selling um, selling point straight away so Greg Norman the shark brand which is Greg Norman's brand um, play dry which I will check but I'm pretty sure is a Nike product so they're all your keywords stripe um, golf, um, 
you know anything related like that um, if they've got any embroidery on them this one had some funny little thing on the sleeve here somewhere yeah that there um, but where is it there it is I'll look into that logo and see if it means anything and I'll include that as well so yeah just um, your keywords are, are pretty important if you don't put keywords in there nobody's going to find your listing amongst the thousands of um, items that are on eBay at any given time or millions of items I should say but thousands are probably the same product you're trying to sell so um, keywords I always check sold listings so if you go into your eBay and you look at your completed or your sold which automatically ticks completed you look at your sold listings um, and and see what others are selling for or sold for and then that gives you some idea where the ballpark is of where you want to sell it now recently I came across at an op shop a um, was it 1998 um, Billy the Big Mouth Bass the singing fish thingy and um, that were really cool back in the time and um, I paid four bucks for that and it was working but it wasn't working completely right he the tail moved the mouth sung the music worked the um, the sensor in front worked everything everything worked in that respect but the fish actually was meant to tilt in the middle of his body and that wasn't working but I still managed to sell it for 60 bucks and it sold really quick I had watches jump all over I probably had uh, 10 watches in the first 24 hours and then it just sold so um, yeah but anyway back to my point is that I did a bit of research on the completed listings picked out the keywords that the higher price because some only sold for 20 bucks and um, some new in box for 30 bucks and stuff like that but I went through and picked the high priced ones the ones that sold for big money and then pulled their ads apart with keywords and stuff and then listed mine using their keywords and um, yeah did the trick did the trick really well so yeah that's what I always look for try and get those keywords and and pilfer off somebody else if you have to like what works for others why not use it to your advantage alrighty okay so when I was saying about obscure things um, to look out for perfect example I've got two of them here so the coca-cola singlet it's a basketball singlet it's um, made in the USA it's coca-cola branded um, it's that I don't know what you call it but you know like the basketball singlets are made so you've got two types of people there that would be interested in buying that it would be the, the basketball people and then there's a hell of a lot of coca-cola collectors out there so coca-cola stuff's always pretty good um, this could be hit and miss I'm not sure never sold one before but I'm going to try and get 20 out of it with um, postage on top of that so um, yeah we'll see how we go there and the other thing was this World Atlas DVD it's a, sorry DVD PC um, PC ROM so it's a 3D World Atlas um, cost me two bucks as you can see and it's got all this good stuff there people environment politics landscape well, put it in frame eh? so people environment politics landscape climate so and then it's got all this stuff on the back that it does so I don't no idea but it's there you go I just got a, um, a message on my phone I don't have a cow it's old too I think it was copyright 2002 that's got some age to it so there'll be somebody out there that'll want that and they'll pay you know 15 20 bucks for it I, I'm guessing I'm not completely sure but at two bucks I was never gonna leave that in the store alright so I thought I'd show you um, this one as well um, I had to pay up for this it cost me five bucks but I do believe it's brand new it's embroidered with Jeep it's got all the little Jeep logos on the zippers down here there we go it's got a little Jeep logo down here and then if we turn him around we have the Jeep logo up the top there it has a, a hood in the collar um, polar fleece on the inside it's very nice what they call that a soft shell jacket Jeep branded um, I can sell that as Jeep because it's Jeep merchandise so there's no problem with that um, I will sell it as used even though I believe it's not but I really don't know what to expect out of that a lot more than my five dollars I'm guessing 
But I should also mention, and it's only my experience, sorry for the noise, I live on a busy road and there's a bus going past. Um, yeah, from my experience, selling internationally, that Coca-Cola singlet, um, there was other basketball singlets around that. Um, there was some Miami Heat and there was another couple of American um, teams. I can't remember what they were now. But my experience is that they don't buy, they don't sell internationally. Um, I only buy them if you think you can sell them in Australia. I bought NASCAR stuff um, and the Dale Earnhardt's and Jeff Gordon's and things like that. They sell um, anything other, like I've got, um, no, I can't even think now, but I've had others that um, just aren't as big a brand, you know, big, bigger name, and they just, they don't sell. Um, probably because of the shipping, like if, if I'm going to charge $30 for a, a vintage NASCAR shirt, um, I need to charge $30 shipping, because in reality it costs almost $25 for a 500 gram um, parcel to the US. Then there's the cost of your bag, um, and what else was there? And sorry, the, the fee that eBay, eBay charges you 11% uh, of the postage charge as well, so always keep that in mind, guys. Yeah, there's, there's always that fee. Um, so yeah, unless you've got something really special and you think you can ship it internationally, I just don't, I just don't, I don't, yeah, it doesn't work for me. So those Miami Heat ones and the others that I saw the other day, they stayed on the shelf, they just weren't weren't worth it for me because there's no Australian interest in them. I've got other shirts there, I've got St. Louis Cardinals and um, what else? Minnesota Twins, things like that, that um, the Americans won't pay the postage and the Australians aren't interested in them, so they just sit there gathering dust. So just, just a, a little tip there, I mean everyone's different obviously and this is, like I said, it was never meant to be an instructional DVD, it's just well, instructional DVD, instructional video, it's just how I do things, so any tips you can pick up or whatever is all, all good as far as I'm concerned, so I mean I watch other people that do this, I watch, you know, the garage flips and um, there's the other one, Flip and Dork, those type of guys, heaps of good content there guys, um, yeah, yeah, so look, I'm just sharing what I learn, what I know, a bit of Australian content, there's not much out there in YouTube land for Australian um, content reselling. Um, I'm sure it's a big thing in Australia, but people just don't do um, videos of it. Um, yeah, all right, cool. All right, just a couple of little quick things. That's obscure. It's a, um, a juicer. I don't know how old it is. It's got no markings on it. it cost me a dollar. Um, it's got that uranium glass look about it, but I doubt it is. At that price, I think they would have known. Anyway, we'll have a look. The black light. I'll have a look later. All right. So next thing is these six bucks at the, at the Salvation Army. Now they're really good neck pumas. Um, just a bit of grunge there. Um, and they're, they're not steel cap, but I put a magnet on them, they're not steel, but they're, um, they're a solid cap shoe. They're heavy too, I, I have no idea what they're for, I'm sure they've got a purpose. And the last thing is these. It's got a uh, magic eraser sponge. Um, you pick them up for about two bucks at the junk shop, and they are just magic. Seriously, like the grunge on them. You can use a a cloth or whatever, but nothing will fix it like this. Hope that shows. See the grunge there. It'll even move marker pen and stuff like that. It's awesome stuff. Later, but I'll guarantee it'll come off. See, because I'm working one handed, it's difficult. Let me put the camera down. It's okay, so there you go. 
it's cleaned it up. The sponge actually disintegrates as you do it. That's what it's designed to do. It's some little particles or some crap in there that cleans them up, but yeah, make them up good. Don't know what they're worth. They'll be worth more than six bucks, I'm sure. Alrighty.